What is the price of the Apple Vision Pro? The Apple Vision Pro has a quite the price tag. It comes at a whopping $3,499. How much does the Apple headset weigh? It's around 625 grams. How many pixels does the display have? 23 million pixels. Now, for the big question, is the Apple headset any good? It depends on what you're looking for in a headset. The Apple Vision Pro has some cool features, but it also comes with trade-offs. Trade-offs like what? Some trade-offs you might encounter or discomfort from the weight on your face. Potential makeup smudging, restrictions on picture taking, limited connectivity options, decreased performance in dark rooms, constant hand tracking, and potential limitations for cameras and displays. Okay, so that was me testing out the rag, putting all the text from the Apple Vision Pro review from The Verge into a document. And yeah, I think it worked quite good, so let me show you how I did this. Okay, so this is pretty much the setup. It's pretty simple. So we have a document. In our case, it's the Apple Vision Pro review. We send that over to Langchain that is going to create our vector embeddings. And those embeddings are going to be stored at ChromaDB. And then we can take a user query to fetch the most similar vectors to our user query. And we can take those responses and send them to our chatbot. In this case, it's Mistral7b. As just a context, I'm going to show you how you do that. And then Mr. B can use that context and give us an answer back, right? So I have set this up so we can get the answer both in text or in speech. That's, yeah, that's up to you. But uh, overall, this is a pretty simple rag setup. Yeah, and as you can see here, it's 90 lines of code. Very simple to set up. You can see we use Langchain and we use Chroma here. Uh, we, have, we have to use OpenAI because we need, I think we use the uh, chat OpenAI to actually fetch the embeddings. You can see I have this set up with a local LM uh, studio that is running Mistral 7B. Yeah, our OpenAI key. And we set our directory where we want to load our documents for, from. We have a load a document function. We have a split document function because we want to chunk it up into different sizes so i'm doing like a 500 size and we do like a 50 overlap so we don't miss anything right and here is kind of how many chunks we want to feed into our query so yeah i just put that down to three but you can adjust that of course our mr 7 b function we have a system prompt that is basically just gonna be your name is Julie, you're a tech expert, always keep the response quite short and conversational, right? And here is kind of our true loop. So what I wanted to show you is how we kind of feed the context into the, to the prompt. You can call it like that. Here is kind of, we get the answer back from the vector database and we feed that answer into, I just created a prompt that says context and we feed the answer in here. And then we have the user query as our prompt. That is going to be what we are putting in here, right, in the start of our true loop. So that means that uh, Mr. 7B can kind of use the context here to answer our query. And that is basically the setup. You can, of course, do this as advanced as you want. And if we take a look at kind of the speech version, it's basically the same, right? It's a bit more advanced, but it's basically exactly the same. We feed the context here and yeah, from the context above, answer the user query. That is our text input from our voice that is translated with faster whisper, right? And that is basically the setup. Uh, the only thing I did here on the, on the talk part or the speech part is that I log everything we talk about. And the idea behind that was that we can kind of store our chat log and when we load that into this system here, we can kind of get the chatbot to remember what we talked about last time, right? So we're going to test that out. And yeah, that is basically the setup. Of course, I'm going to upload this to my GitHub. If you are interested in that, just become a member of the channel. Follow the link in the description below and you will get access to this. But uh, this should be pretty easy to set up yourself if you are interested. So now let's test it more. Let's upload different kinds of documents and see how well it performs. Okay, so the first test I thought we can do, I went over to OpenAI, I went to a blog, I copied all the text from this blog post here about embeddings and API updates. I put that just into a simple text document. Uh, I'm not going to do anything fancy, I just put everything into a text document, yeah, like I said. I put it into my log folder here. And now let's try to run it and see if we can ask like very 
detailed questions here about the blog post. Okay, so I wanted to see if we can pick out a very specific part of the blog post here and question it. So let's compare the performance between ADA002 and the text embedding 3 small model. You can see, yeah, it has increased from 31.4 to 44, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to uh, query here is how is the performance uh, if we compare ADA002 to embedding 3 small. So let's run that. So what I wanted to show you here is the first thing we see here now is kind of the prompt, right? So you can see this is the part we are feeding into Mistral 7B. If we zoom in a bit, you can see we have context. And this is what is being fetched from the, the vector embeddings. And here we just repeat our user query from up here, right? So when we feed all of this to Mistral 7B, it can respond here. So the performance of bedding 3 small is better than the other 0 2, which increases in score both in mirror CL and M table benchmarks. Okay, so we can only return this, but I just wanted to show you what we are actually feeding into Mistral 7B. And this, I think, shows very good how RAG works, like we add additional context to our query. So this is what I wanted to show here. Uh, so the next thing at top we can do is just go over to the speech version of this and try a different query. Okay, so I thought we just can ask a very general question. So let's just ask about the updated GPT-4 Turbo preview. So let me just run this here now. Tell me about the updates to the GPT-4 Turbo preview. We've made improvements in the GPT-4 Turbo preview, fixing bugs and enhancing performance for tasks like code generation. It's now more thorough and has reduced instances of laziness. There was also a fix for non-English Cuff 8 generations. Overall, these updates aim to make it better and more reliable. Okay, yeah, I think that was pretty good. So again, you can kind of see now this is the part what was fed into the context. And here is what we got back from Mistral 7B in a voice in this time. Uh, so yeah, I think this works good. Okay, so now I wanted to go super specific. So let's ask about what is the absolute lowest embedding size we can have. So let's try that. What is the absolute lowest embedding size we can have? 256 dimensions. And what is the biggest embedding size? Biggest would be 3072. Yeah, well done. So you can see here, smallest is 256 and the biggest is 3072. So yeah, perfect. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to show you is the logging system I created for this. This was kind of so yeah, that you can maybe give your chatbot companion like a long-term memory by using vector embeddings. So this works. So this was kind of our conversations. So I just had like a fictional conversations with the, the chatbot here. And these conversations ended at 15.36. We had a, a conversation later and we had one more. So what we're going to do now is we're going to send this into the vector database. And then we're going to start to query if we can remember what we talked about. Yeah, in our last past conversation. So let's test that out and see if it works. Okay, so as you can see from the chat log here. I asked to meet up this fictional character at the restaurant called the Cozy Corner. So I thought that could be kind of our first query. Uh, if I can, if I can see if we can remember what the restaurant we went to was called. So let me just fire up this here. Hi again, Julie, it's Chris. So I kind of forgot the restaurant we went to a few days ago. I forgot the name of it. Uh, do you remember? The place we went to is called the Cozy Corner. Ah, that's right. Now I remember. Do you remember what kind of food we ate there? I, I'm, I'm so forgetful. Oh yes, we shared a lasagna dish and it was really tasty. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember now. What did we have for drinks? We had a bottle of red wine. It was a nice Cabernet Sauvignon. What did we have to drink before we went to our table? That's correct. We had a couple of beers while waiting for our table to be ready. Okay, so I gotta say that was pretty much a success if we go up here. So the first thing, we got the name of the restaurant. Let me move this over here. So we got the name of the food we ate. We got the uh, what we drank. We got the my favorite game. 
and Julie's favorite game. So uh, yeah, I gotta say this was a success. And if we scroll down here now, if we reload our log, you can see everything we talked about now was also logged. <laughs> so that's a bit funny. But yeah, I'm happy with this. So yeah, that was basically what I wanted to share today. I will put up the simplest version of this. Uh, just follow the link in the description and you can find it on my public GitHub if you want access to the other versions. Just become a member of the channel and you will get access to the community GitHub and the community Discord. Other than that, hope you learned something and I'll see you again on Sunday.